Chinese food. What exactly does that mean? With an area of over 9 million square kilometers, home to 1.5 billion people, comprising over 50 ethnic groups in regions that range from tropical to subarctic, China is diverse to say the least, and that certainly extends to the food that comes from it. The cuisine that Hong Kong is synonymous with, Cantonese, is naturally found everywhere in the city. But there are also variations of Chinese food to be found here that may come as a little bit of a surprise. Today, we're heading to a place that serves curry mutton. Yep, you heard that right, sheep. In a dish that borrows from northern Chinese culinary traditions, whilst being served in the most quintessential of Hong Kong foodie settings. The dish, along with the vendor that makes it, Wai Ki, is absolutely raved about. And best of all, it's located in Barrington Market Cooked Food Center, on the edge of Causeway Bay. So join us as we dig into a somewhat different kind of local foodie favorite and soak up the ambience of one of the most popular cooked food centers in the city. This is Sam Eats It. Hey guys, thank you as always for joining me. We're about to head over to Barrington Cook Food Centre in the wet market that was built here in 1979. And this place is especially cool because although it's only a five minute walk from one of the world's premier shopping districts, uh, it offers just something completely different than a lot of the high-end restaurants in the glitzy malls over there. This is one of the most down-to-earth, local, authentic, quintessentially Hong Kong food places in the entire city. As I said in the intro, Waikiki, the store that we're going to be patronizing today, is famous for mutton, and there's quite a story behind it. So let's get in there and I'll reveal all as we try some of it and some of the menu items to see what all the fuss is about. Let's do this. So we've just ordered our curry mutton and our roast duck with rice, two of the most popular dishes here. Uh, now, as I said outside, there is a story behind the curry mutton, so allow me to reveal it. It all starts back in 1938 in the city of Guangzhou on the mainland, from where, so the story goes, a Muslim noodle maker came to Hong Kong to escape the Japanese invasion of Canton. It wasn't actually for another three years until the Japanese took Hong Kong, that was in December 1941. Anyway, he got here, and upon arriving in Hong Kong, he realized that there was hardly any food that catered to Muslims, no halal. So what did he do? You guessed it, the absolute baller. He opened his own shop, Waikiki, and it's been in existence now for over 50 years. Uh, now I'm aware that the math doesn't add up on that because this cooked food center has only been around since 1979. So that means that Waikiki must have existed uh, elsewhere for quite a few years before moving in here. Now I couldn't find exact details on where that was. So if anybody out there knows, please, 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 please let us know in the comments because I would love to know. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Perfect timing. Uh, everything is great. Yeah, that looks amazing. Thank you. Cheers. Perfect timing. Uh, yeah, so anyway, yeah, if anybody knows where this place was before it moved into Barrington Cook Food Centre, please let us know in the comments. I would love to know. So in its history, this place has gained a really, really, really passionate and loyal following uh, from a lot of locals, and that includes the sizable Muslim community that lives around here. Uh, so yeah, people rave about this curry mutton and rice especially. It's the headliner and uh, all of it just looks really, really good. Uh, so yeah, let's dig in. Couple of the bones when you eat there. There are a lot of bones. Mm. Little ones that you don't suspect, and then really big ones like this. Oh, but oh my god, that is so 
really, really rich. Um, let me have a taste of the sauce. I did read online, doing a bit of research beforehand, that the sauce was very mild. I've got to be honest, it's a little bit spicy. They must have put a bit of spice in it today, but that is so bloody fragrant and aromatic. And the meat is just, oh. I think it's really cool because it just, like just look at it, it looks unkempt and gamey and kind of just meaty. And then, mm, mm. Mm. It just completely falls apart in your mouth. That meat is so tender and so flavoursome. And the, this sauce, although it's got a little bit, I mean, it's curry, you know, it should pack a punch, but it's also full of flavour. It's like the, it's obviously a mud and flavoured curry. Mm. Um, let's try a little bit of rice with that. There we go. Mm. Now, as I've been saying, lamb is relatively uh, uncommon in Hong Kong. You know, you can get it, but it's not everywhere, like dim sum or a lot of the uh, Cantonese dishes. Uh, now, it's usually eaten in northern parts of China. I'm talking like uh, Xinjiang, um, Tibet, Inner Mongolia, where it's cold because it's seen as a warming food. Uh, so yeah, it's just really special to be able to get it down here in a place that almost takes cues from Central Asian cuisine, the way that it does this. It's lovely. Very warm and ah. Mm. Yum. Okay, so now let's move on to the second dish that we've ordered, the roast duck. And this looks absolutely fantastic. And some people out there might be thinking, a Muslim restaurant serving roast duck? Well, look around you. This is Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, this is a very Hong Kong restaurant, despite its uh, Muslim roots. And honestly, that's what makes it super cool, in my opinion. It's kind of like a marriage of multiple cultures. An unusual mix in Hong Kong as well, which is just uh, all the more fun. Uh, but yeah, here we go. This is our roasted duck with rice. You get a pretty big portion. It's not bad for 47 bucks. The skin is super nice and shiny, uh, which is always a good sign. And yeah, I can't wait to dig into this meat. It looks divine. Let's try it. Really nice. So the skin, lovely and crispy. Kind of what I expected from that shine that it gives off. And um, it's just nice when you dip it into that plum sauce. That plum sauce has quite a tang to it. So it kind of just like, kind of like uh, just zest through. You know, the slight rich, almost greasy flavor of the duck. But the duck is just lovely. You know, obviously it's a naturally an oilier bird than chicken or turkey. Uh, and it's just a great combination with that sauce. It's kind of, the meat itself is pretty tender, kind of delicate, breaks apart in your teeth. And this rice as well, it's good that uh, it always, the better rice that the duck's on, it always picks up just a little bit of that duck flavor. So, always enjoy that too. Yeah, this is a really, really good roast duck and rice. Can't complain at all, really good. And it's amazing that they can do something that is ubiquitous like this, and then something that isn't as common uh, in Hong Kong, like the, uh, the the mutton curry, they can do them both equally amazingly. So this place, yeah, gets top marks, really good. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. It's busy. Very busy. I'm gonna have to wait to order. Can we get a soup of the day, please? Soup of the day? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Mm. Okay, so we've ordered the soup of the day just to round off the meal. You know, just after all that meaty 
gluttonous deliciousness just end with something clean and now the soup of the day here usually we've been told off uh, a fellow customer that was sat here a couple of minutes ago that the the soup is usually chicken broth based and they vary with other things in it and today it is uh, hairy melon and it looks lovely uh, so yeah let's just have a try this just to mellow off the feeling and bring this meal to a gentle close let's do this Really nice, really homely. Chicken broth is nice and gentle. Yeah, again, just a really nice, uh, kind of a wintry dish, obviously, soup, melon soup. But yeah, gentle end to a delicious, and uh, yeah, as I said, quite a decadent meal. Lovely. So that's the end of the meal. Uh, we've enjoyed our lovely curry mutton, our lovely Cantonese crispy duck, and uh, we've yeah, washed it down with that lovely soothing soup of the day. All the foods, it's really reflective of actually the, the mix of different people in here with the, the, the locals and the local Muslims coming in there. Uh, it's just a great place to be Barrington Cook Food Center in general, especially just before lunch. You get an absolute rush of people. As we know, Hong Kong is a city that was built on immigrants. Uh, so it's just really nice to come here and be at the nexus, both food-wise and people-wise, where two cultures mix in a way that isn't often seen everywhere in Hong Kong. It's just a really cool thing to be a part of. So yeah, place, atmosphere, staff, food, all amazing. I can't recommend this place enough. But the meal has come to an end and the time, sadly, has come for us to leave. So I'm gonna get off this chair and roll my way home with all this food in my body. And uh, as usual guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. And that concludes our visit to Waikiki in Barrington Cook Food Center. We hope you enjoyed joining us as we dived into a different kind of Chinese food culture. And if so, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and of course, share this video with all your foodie friends. Thanks for watching, and until the next feast, take care and stay hungry.